because I've mentioned how all of these products uh, work together, right? You might have a simulation user, as soon as you make a design change, they need one of those automatic notifications to know, hey, we need to you know, ensure this is gonna meet our minimum factors of safety, it's not gonna have too much stress, or maybe just involve them in the design portion. They could run a topology study and help reduce weight, or just make that a part of the approval process. So these things are all linked together. And I'll talk a little bit about managing simulation data, if I remember as well, <laughs> of what to do with those result files. Uh, remember, all of the setups for simulations are stored inside the SOLIDWORKS files that are data managed. So I'm going to do this just in two big bulk things here. I'm not going to go as in-depth as I went with PDM, but I want to talk a bit about all of the different simulation offerings that you can get your hands on today because it is a broad landscape of things you can do. Generally, we think about simulation and the name SOLIDWORKS simulation as, is it strong enough? Uh, what are the stresses and displacements of factory safety? But you can do a lot more nowadays with SOLIDWORKS simulation offerings. So we'll look at some of those. And then a quick live look at SOLIDWORKS simulation. I'll show you an actual issue that the company Homatro had with that same rescue spreader um, that they made a design change really to figure out if they could go with a cheaper manufacturing method. But by doing that, we need to ensure too that it's gonna be strong enough uh, for its application. So let's talk about a bit about the landscape, starting with what is just called SOLIDWORKS simulation. Just that name is the brand of this product. And this is finite element analysis. This is, we're gonna break these things down into little triangles and elements and do the math in each one of those little elements and find out, is it strong enough? Is it strong enough is a linear static analysis for parts and assemblies. It's the one everybody pretty much starts with no matter what higher level you're getting into. And that's actually included with SOLIDWORKS Premium. So if you have a SOLIDWORKS Premium license, well, you can actually run linear static FEA for parts and assemblies. Now, above that, simulation has a three-tiered licensing structure just like SOLIDWORKS does. So we got standard, professional, and premium. So if you find a nice bundle, if you talk to Nathan and, and he's like, hey, actually right now, if you buy SOLIDWORKS Premium, it comes better with SimPro, you know, sometimes you'll end up in one of these three packages for pricing regions or just for functionality. Maybe you want linear static, but you also need motion analysis and fatigue studies. That's the SIM standard package. Now, most people do fall into simulation professional. It covers everything in simulation standard plus all these other study types. Frequency analysis. Are we going to have, uh, you know, a harmonic response that could potentially be dangerous? You know, anything you're bolting to an engine, you have to check that out. Thermal analysis. Optimization, you know, how thin can we make this part? Or topology studies, tell me SOLIDWORKS where I could possibly remove material and make it more organic shape. So just a huge number of studies that are all pretty easy to run and just turn your linear static analysis into one of those analysis types. Then at the high end, you've got simulation premium. A little more niche, this is where you're running a non-linear study. Maybe you're dealing with gasket materials or something that just has some type of non-linear nature to it that you couldn't do in a linear static analysis. Same with dynamics. You're gonna do a, a seismic thing, or you actually have a shaker table, or you wanna input that frequency. That's where you get into dynamics. And really what I see used quite often in Sim Premium is composites. Composites can be done in a linear static analysis. It doesn't have to be a nonlinear dynamic. Composites are just the ability to do that laminate stack up of fiberglass, of carbon fiber, of those things with different grain directions. So if you want to add that capability, that's in simulation premium. It's also where you could run a dynamic fatigue study as well. Now that's all your FEA stuff. And of course, it's all run inside of SOLIDWORKS, same interface. So is flow simulation. We call this SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. That's the name of the, the tool set. This is CFD or computational fluid dynamics. This to me is, is one of my favorite sim packages I get to mess with. It is just awesome. It does so much stuff and it gives you really amazing qualitative outputs as well as the hard numbers to things that I think are generally counterintuitive and have crazy effects, you know, virtual bodies that are affecting drag calculations, um, the Kawanda effect, things at high Mach number that, you know, in, in stress I can usually predict where the highest stress is. In flow, a lot of strange behaviors could happen that this tool is really for. There are two extensions to it. So there's just one license flow simulation. There's an extension for electronics cooling. Should you want to do stuff like run current through a resistor and find out if you're going to burn a fuse up um, and to extend databases and have better PCBs and, and heat pipes 
um, and thermal resistors uh, built in, thermoelectric coolers. Now, there's also an extension for HVAC. I want to point out it's not just for HVAC companies who want comfort parameters. It's actually advanced radiation that takes into a, account the spectrum of light. So you can imagine, you know, Philips light bulbs, anybody running LEDs, grow light operations, anything in outer space, satellite dish stuff. You might be looking in, into a more advanced uh, radiation study type. And those are just two add-on modules to the SOLIDWORKS flow simulation license. Now, one that not everybody gets into is actually called SOLIDWORKS Plastics. Again, just in the same interface, this simulates the injection mold flow process. So are we gonna have manufacturing defects or can we just design our part better? You know, can we do thinner walls? Should we increase draft? Should we specify ABS plastic or polycarbonate? Um, that, that's really all in the plastic standard package. So again, three tiered packaging. And you could say, yeah, I'm a designer. I'm going to use some plastic parts. Um, I don't want them to have weld lines where fluid flows came back together, or de-slink surface effects where I've got text. Um, you could check all that stuff out with plastic standard. Now, if you're getting a little more complicated and you're doing over-molding, you want to run multiple cavities inside the same mold. Maybe you own an injection mold machine. You're definitely going to want plastics professional. And at the highest level, if you're designing the molds themselves, the cooling channels inside those molds, plus you want to calculate the warping that would come out after the mold is opened up. So we're talking after the pack cycle, after the full cycling is done, um, and find out if you're going to have some warping. That's at the highest level here, the premium package. So anyone doing plastic parts, I think this makes a lot of sense in the design. I think there's a lot of miscommunications I see out there uh, with plastic parts, not always the same high level of communication I get from a, a machine shop, um, but there's no reason why we couldn't just design parts that we know are going to work well and, and cheap as soon as we send them out uh, to be injection molded. Yeah, plus molds are expensive, right? And get it right the first time is, is pretty handy there. Now there's one high level, I'm, I'm going to bring up 3D experience again, it's brand new. Uh, I mentioned there was some plug and play cloud data management solutions there. There's some really high end simulation stuff there that's built upon Abacus. So I just talked about SOLIDWORKS simulation, FEA, you know, the, is it strong enough uh, type analysis. And if you think about it, they're really easy to use for anyone in SOLIDWORKS, right? Designers, engineers, maybe somebody who is a uh, data analyst and that's all they do and went to college for. The SOLIDWORKS tools are, are for us. We can all just get our hands on them and go. Um, if you are running simulation premium in the nonlinear world, you might run into some uh, troubles because nonlinears can sometimes be divergent, material properties are really important, and you might want some additional capabilities like to be able to do brick meshing. Well, 3D experience from Dassault Systems actually allows this at a, at a level up called structural performance engineer. This is built upon Abacus, the solvers and meshers of Abacus or Simulia, and it is in their cloud platform. And this extends the capabilities of what you could do with nonlinear studies. In fact, every study that runs there is nonlinear. Every contact condition by default is no penetration, um, and it is a very high end simulation tool. They even have one above that called Structural Mechanics Engineer that does everything Structural Performance Engineer does, plus it adds in dynamics. Um, you can really do some wild stuff here. Take a look at our YouTube channel in the next week or two. We're going to have a new webinar up that shows some usage of this software. Um, and if you're into that really high level FEA stuff, um, I think this is going to you know, be something interesting to you. But I want to stick with SOLIDWORKS simulation. Really, it's for any designer, any engineer to use. It's fully integrated into the SOLIDWORKS interface, just like the SOLIDWORKS Flow and SOLIDWORKS Plastic is. So you can you make use of configurations. You can use all of your workflows and data management real nice. Now, I should point out Simulation Express is in every seat of SOLIDWORKS. So if you open up SOLIDWORKS and you go to the Evaluate tab on your command manager, there is a Sim Express wizard. It works just for parts. Um, there's some limitations of just doing force, but it's a great tool to start off with. It will ask you for a product code. Just follow the web link that's there. That product code is free. All right, linear static now for parts and assemblies I mentioned, that's included with every seat of SOLIDWORKS Premium. So if you have SOLIDWORKS Premium, fire it up. You don't need Sim Express. You can get right into it. And these are tools that if you use SOLIDWORKS and you know how to right click, you're going to be able to use this stuff. So Let's take a look then at some SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation. Now I want to show you the handle of that same spreader and do a little simulation work there. It used to be designed a little bit differently. So I'm going to open up 
Gosh, I might open up that same assembly again. Uh, here's an assembly of just a handle. We can take a look at that. And uh, you know what? I don't even need to check this out. You can see when I'm opening a file, PDM is saying, hey, do you want to check it out and take control of it? Let's just do some what if work. So I hit cancel there. I didn't check it out. I'm just, I'm just looking at it, just seeing what I think. Now, this handle used to be a welded form. It used to just be made with a sweep, but uh, I'm sorry, it used to be a bent, just made with a form. Now it's a welded design where we have a flat panel that's getting welded onto some tubing. Uh, it's much cheaper to manufacture it for us that way, but I want to find out if it's strong enough, right? So I'm just going to start with just the part and open this guy up. Again, I'm, I'm not even going to worry about PDM's prompt there to check it out. I'm just going to do this as read only as kind of a what if study because, well, this is already released, it's already approved. And I'm going to fire up simulation. Now, simulation is just one of your add ins. You go tools and add ins, and you can check on SOLIDWORKS simulation. Once you do, you'll get a simulation tab at the top, and you get a simulation drop down menu. I'm going to talk a little more about data management because under this simulation drop down menu, there are options that are just for simulation users. You need to have the add in turned on and a file open to see these options, which I do. So I'm going to hit options. And uh, this shows me all my default options um, for new simulations. And I want you to notice there's a results area. What I personally like to do is make a folder on my local machine where all of my simulation results go. And I don't worry about checking them in or out of PDM. It's totally up to you. There's options in PDM to go either way. But I like doing it this way. My simulation setup is saved in this part and that'll be checked in the PDM. And if I ever wanna archive results, I just put them in a zip folder. I just go to this folder and, and zip them up, or I do a pack and go and check the include simulation results box. This is also nice because simulation results can take up size, they can take up some space. And uh, you know, I like to get in there every now and then and just delete all my results. I can always get them back by just hitting run. I'll get the exact same thing. So you know, I just go in there and delete results sometimes. All right, that's really all the data management I do. Otherwise, I'm just gonna start up a new study and notice when I do that, I've got all the study types of all the licenses. Static is what you get with SOLIDWORKS Premium. If you have Simulation Professional, you'll see everything here except for nonlinear and linear dynamics. So SimPro gets you most things, including topology studies. But whatever you do, just start off with a static study. So I'm gonna hit the green check and start one up. I know I didn't check it out. PDM's like, are you sure? Are you sure? You're modifying this file. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna lose all my work at the end of this. And I'm going to open this file up and I can see SOLIDWORKS knows how to deal with it a bit already. It knows what mesh elements to use and it knows what material is on it. So more of that 4340. I like it when you're in a study, if you check material, it's the same material database that you'd use inside of SOLIDWORKS. But when you do it in a SIM study, it color codes in red the material properties that you have to have for that study type. So easy way to know if you're making yourself a custom material, what materials you absolutely need to go find and, and use in the study type. Now there's also a simulation advisor that will hold your hand and walk you through this thing like a tutorial. I'm not gonna use that, I'm just using the sim tree and I'm moving from top to bottom. Now I know these symbols, I know this is gonna be high quality tetrahedral solid elements using this material. Just the symbols in the tree tell me that. I'm on a single part so I don't really have connections but I do have some fixtures to the rest of the world and to keep things really simple, I'm gonna use fixed geometry on the holes that I'm gonna bolt down. Now here I'm just using the G key to open up a magnifying glass. I know some of you guys like that. I'm gonna hit the G key so I can click on these internal faces. And that's the simplest way. I could put in a bolt connector and, and look for tear out and stuff, but I actually know that that's not a big deal there. My bolts are fine. So I'm just gonna say those holes there are infinitely rigid. Kind of a big engineering assumption. And then I'm gonna add an external force onto this thing. Somebody could be holding on to this face right here and pulling. So I'm gonna select a plane to measure the direction that they might pull against. And I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna allow somebody to pull, let's say with 500 Newtons in the direction that you see these purple arrows going. All right, they're gonna be held down by those bolts, but somebody might really be yanking on this thing and I don't want it to fail. Now, I could spend all day talking about meshing and solve time and accuracy, and I actually do in our training courses, but I'm just gonna hit run because that's all you need if you're running a SOLIDWORKS sim. You got a shape, you got a material, you got a fixture and a load. There's a lot of options for those things, but you, you just work from the top of the tree down and put those things in and bang, you got a simulation that ran.
what I like to do first, I'm looking at a displacement plot and it's exaggerated. Uh, it's really only 0.18 inches of displacement, but it's exaggerated so that I can animate it on my screen and sanity check myself and go, is this the directions this thing would bend if I'm moving it? Because my fixtures and loadings have to match the real world, right? That's the garbage in, garbage out situation. So I'm gonna assume, looking at this, that I gave it good fixtures and loads. And my assumptions were okay. So then I might find out where do I have the max stresses? And I have them down in the bottom, not too bad around where I'm gonna end up welding this thing and actually increase strength, but near those bolts. And that's, that's not amazing. I can tell it's not failing though. My yield strength material is shown here and I'm not above what the material can handle. And another great way to see that is a factor of safety plot. So I'm just gonna create a new plot. You know, it, it created a few plots for me automatically, but I can make all sorts of plots. I'm just gonna make a quick factor of safety plot that's gonna compare the von Mises stress, kind of a worse stress here that it shows automatically because this is metal, against the yield strength or what the material can handle. And I'm just plotting this from a minimum value to a max of like two. So my minimum factor of safety here is 1.5. I can see where it is. This can take about 1.5 times the loading before it starts to permanently deform um, and be bent or even destroyed. Um, so it's, it passes, it's successful, but 1.5 is not a lot. And this isn't just consumer product, this is life-saving product. So let's see if we can get that higher. I, I would like the factor safety to be above two. So I know I could safely, you know, double my loading conditions and, and not have to worry about replacing a component on here. So to do that, I'm gonna actually fire up a design study. And you could do what I'm doing here for the most part, even in Sim Express. But if you wanna get heavy into topology optimization or just design study, which I call parametric optimization, you're probably gonna need SimPro, Simulation Professional License. But this is what a design study looks like. And as simple as I can make it, it lets me pick things to vary. So I'm gonna add a variable here. And an easy way to do that is just find a dimension on my part. Let's say this six right here. When I click on that, it becomes linked and I can give it a name like thickness, you know, thickness of the part. And I'm gonna say, hey, that thickness right now is six. I know I wanna make it thicker. So I'm gonna say the minimum value you can choose is six. The maximum value I'll leave at nine. And uh, it's gonna range by three millimeter steps. Since I've got Sim Pro, I'm just gonna say, hey, just range. I don't know the step size or discrete values, but I cut this myself so you can pick any thickness you want. Now I need to give it a limit or a constraint. And the easiest way to do that is add a sensor. Sensors can be used for anything in SOLIDWORKS. They're like the oil light in your car. So you can just say, hey, give me an alert when my mask gets too heavy in this part. But I'm gonna set a sensor that watches simulation data and I wanna watch that factor of safety, right? The minimum factor of safety. So I pop that sensor in and say, my factor of safety has to be more than two in that static study I just made. That's my minimum. And a goal, the most common thing, honestly, is add a sensor for mass because my goal is to be as light as possible. I want to add material, but as little as necessary to get my factor of safety above two. And with the optimization checkbox checked, I can just hit run. Now, I only gave it one variable. If you just give it one thing to vary, it's going to come up with five scenarios or five individual simulations to run. And it's just starting to crank through them right now. It's so going to choose my smallest size. I'm going to jump up to my largest size, and then it's going to compare that to my goal and essentially split the difference. And we can put as many of these in here as we want. You could vary temperature loads and frequencies and all the different study type results. Um, or you could even run a topology optimization where we don't specify where we're adding or removing material. We actually let SolidWorks just guess. And that's a cool study type also in SimPro that generally comes out with ergonomic and very natural looking geometries look kind of like nature. But this is a very prismatic part and I, I know a dimension I can change. And it tells me, hey, an optimal value of that dimension would be 7.5 millimeters. So I'm just gonna leave it selected 7.5 millimeters. And then I can, you know, basically already have that 7.5 in my model, as you can see. And I can jump over to my static study and interrogate those results uh, deeper if I'd like to. In fact, I always like looking at uh, stress results with the mesh at the same time. I know I didn't talk too much about the mesh. All I said was come to my training class to know if this is a good mesh. Hint, it is not. <laughs> it needs more work. 
Um, but I think what's cool to look at for these is a design insight plot or an ISO clipping plot where you can actually move a slider and look at where the stress values are highest. So here's kind of materials that are doing the most work to where there's lowest. A lot of times in very prismatic or square type parts, you will find areas that like here where I've got holes that are basically not contributing at all to this loading condition. And you can think about new places you might remove material in a way that you even control with dimensions um, to get a lighter, more efficient part, which still meets your goal of getting over that factor safety of two. So that was a real quick look at the basic SOLIDWORKS simulation, the static analysis type of FEA that's included with SOLIDWORKS Premium that uses some of the optimization techniques of Simulation Professional. The point I wanna make is that this stuff is for everyone using SOLIDWORKS. Use it in the design process. Yes, you can use it to figure out why you had a failure in the field and reverse engineer, but use it early in the design. When you make a change, let PDM notify whoever is your SIM guy on the team that he should verify it for form and function and include his approval with it. Now I mentioned training because it is an FEA tool and it's very important to get this stuff right. Um, so we have a training course that I teach, I'm teaching a lot of them online nowadays, as you can imagine, we do them as a public class or a custom class. And in three days, you can learn everything you need to know for setting up parts to complicated assemblies and to really knowing, do I have a good mesh? Have I picked the right elements? Are my contacts in between parts? Um, accurate, can I trust these results in their solve solution, and do I have an efficient solve time? That's the goal I'm trying to get across. There's a lot of tools to use in here, but I think that's the most important stuff. We do all of that in three days. If you want to go above that, if you bought Simulation Professional, just two more days on that. So some days we do, a, sometimes we have a five-day long course, um, because once you've learned those fundamentals of meshing, of contacts, of fixtures and loads, those fundamentals stay the same as you get into these other study types. So we can make those analogous to thermal, to fatigue, and it's really just knowing about the machinery at that point. So we cover all of this stuff in just two more days of training. We, of course, have training classes as well for flow simulations, for plastics, and for higher level sim, but these are the ones that I, I think just about everybody with SOLIDWORKS uh, gets into and can use.